Students, so we have so far covered a competitor analysis. It's the first tab of the spreadsheet. We have discussed customer acquisition costs, a customer analysis, cost of goods sold, a pricing analysis, and now we're going to get to the key features that we need um, to set up the, the real start of your pro forma financial statements. The first thing is how are we acquiring startup funds and what are we using them for? So financial statements start at a beginning in time and go forward, right? Startup funds, we'll think of these as sort of time zero. So this is the these are the, 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 the funds you bring in and the costs you have to spend put out before you ever start the business. Say it's a say it's a retail shop. These are all of the expenses that you need to take on before you can open the doors. So we have it broken down into two columns here that must balance the uses of funds and the sources of funds. So what do we need to spend money on to get started? If you're renting out a retail location, you have to prepay some rent. Do you have any machinery if you're running a you know, convenience store that you need to buy to, to do the beverages or whatever? Is there any other kind of equipment? What about the inventory you need to purchase to stack the shelves? Are you building a website? What are your initial design, advertising campaigns looking like? Do you need a vehicle? Supplies? What does it cost to set up the business? And whatever other costs you choose to add to this. So that will be a total of the uses of startup funds. Then we can't very well do this, all of this, without paying for it. So where is it coming from? Is it coming out of your savings account, retirement account, line of credit on your home, a credit card, family giving money, friends? Are you doing a crowdfunding campaign? Are you winning business plan competitions or other bootstrapping funds or anywhere else it might come from? A little word of caution here, if you're thinking about starting with a small business loan, the chances are not as, as good as you might otherwise think. Business uh, banks, even though, and this is a frustrating thing for those of us who work um, with small businesses and entrepreneurs, even though the Small Business Administration, the SBA, a federal organization, is designed to guarantee loans and mitigate the risk for banks, banks are still notoriously conservative about lending to small businesses until they have a track record of profits. Multiple years, two to three years, of at least a profitable um, bottom line. So debt is, is, is a great way, especially from a tax saving standpoint, to finance business growth. It is not, however, a, usually a great vehicle for kicking off and starting the business. Usually out of uh, the stat I saw recently, there are 400,000 um, business startups in the U.S. each year. 75% of those use bootstrapping, some sort of personal funds, family, friend money to get started. So that is the, the, the stark reality of it, and I'm sure most of you are keenly aware that most of these startup funds will come from your own risk. <clears throat> okay. So, once we've completed the sources and uses of funds table, we'll come back to that again later um, when we get to the balance sheet. But for now, let's transition to the income statement, the next tab. Here it is. Looks intimidating. Really isn't. We've got revenue streams calculated here. If you have multiple revenue streams, and this is where you can break it down by channel if you wish. It could be an internet channel. Remember that, we'll go back to that pricing example, an internet channel, a direct-to-consumer channel, a wholesale, retail, right? However you want to break down your sales, you can do it here. If you want to just use one revenue stream that's based on the calculations, remember we did this over here and we calculated six hundred thousand dollars in total sales each year you could simply divide that number by 12 and put it through here right um, in one in one row that would be fine for me but that would not then indicate any cyclical nature of your business and if you're in retail for example you know that these months here are going to be about a third of the entire you know more than the entire rest of the year a third of the entire sales for the year 
So in a perfect world, you'd build in the cyclical nature if it exists in your business. Cost of goods sold, we've established that already. If you're going to break your revenue stream down, you should probably break your cost of goods sold down by the same revenue stream. Only makes sense, right? You want to figure out what the margins are for those different sales channels. Only way to do that is to find this gross profit uh, for, each, for each one of the channels. Okay, so remember, and this is where the financial vernacular can trip from some folks up, there's gross and net. Gross is prior to any other expenses that come out in the business. It is just referring to cost of goods and revenue. Anytime you hear gross profit, gross margin, they're talking about revenue minus cost of goods sold or some amal amalgamation thereof. When you then start getting into all of the rest of the expenses to run your business, after you take those out, then that's when you start hearing the terms net profit, net margin, right? And any net earnings. Anytime you hear EBIT, EBT, EB, right? Earnings before whatever, that's all a net number, okay? So revenues, cost of goods sold gets you to a gross profit and a gross margin can be calculated from there. Then we get into our expenses and you'll know these, right? You'll know what your customer acquisition costs are. We calculated those before. So you all of the, remember over here, we said based on what we did, we are going to spend $5,389. Um, now if that was for a year, it probably wasn't for a year, but we could, we could build that through. So that's your marketing and advertising expense. Rent, utilities, maintenance, Office supplies, insurance, telecom, website, merchant fees, don't forget those. Salaries and benefits that you might be paying to staff. Depreciation, if you've capitalized assets, don't worry about that. If that's a complicated term, we can spend more time on that later. And then anything else you want to add in, feel free to add it in. It'll calculate your total expenses, then it'll calculate your earnings, your net profit before you pay interest and before you pay taxes right? Then you'll have interest expense come out, you'll have your net income before taxes, and then you'll pay taxes on that balance for your bottom line net earnings um, for the business. And each month you'll see January, February, and then for the full year it will calculate for the full year for you there will be a sum. Okay? And again some notes I probably should have mentioned on previous videos at the bottom. I think I will leave it at this for this video and spend the next and last video on the final two tabs.